Individual Differences, the Role of Cultural Child Care Practices Despite a common sequence of motor skill acquisition, there are individual differences in age for the acquisition of motor skills, highlighting the importance of the physical environment and caregiver practices. Ever since milestone charts attempted to document what quote-unquote normal ages to achieve motor milestones are, variation in type and timing of motor development have been reported. For example, motor development in non-Western countries was found to defer from Western norms, and these differences were related to differences in caregiving practices. Even within the Western world, there is cultural variability in the timing of motor milestone attainment. Differences in cultural beliefs and caregiving practices lead to differences in when children achieve motor milestones. For example, there are differences between Dutch and Israeli caregivers in their beliefs about motor development, such that Israeli caregivers attribute more importance to encouraging motor development in the quote-unquote right order and obtaining expert advice. Dutch caregivers, on the other hand, attribute greater importance to letting children follow their own pace in motor development. Studies show that motor development of Dutch children is delayed compared to children in other Western countries, including Israel. The body of cross-cultural research further supports the perspective that motor development is not a universal process. The social and physical environment has a significant role. For example, practicing standing and sitting and applying massage or stretching of the limbs is common in African and Caribbean cultures, but less common in Western cultures. In Tajikistan and other parts of Central Asia, a traditional caregiving practice involves Gavora cradling. Children from birth to 20 months of age are bound on their backs in a tightly wrapped swaddle with arms extended along the sides of the torso and legs straightened and tied together for more than 20 hours per day for some children. Infants are not unwrapped for feeding because mothers lean over the cradle to breastfeed, and they are not removed for toileting because infants urinate through an external catheter and defecate through a hole in the bottom of the cradle. According to the prevailing view among pediatricians and psychologists, severe movement restriction in infancy could have deleterious effects, especially across the first two years of life, a critical period in children's health and development. For example, the extended and abducted position of the legs, especially in the first few months, could lead to hip dysplasia or pigeon-toed gait. Extended time in the supine position could lead to brachycephaly, flattening of the back of the head. Restricted movement, especially in older infants, could delay development of postural and motor skills. As the figure on the screen shows, younger infants spent more hours in a gavor than older toddlers. However, 20% of older infants, 12 to 24 month olds, continue to be cradled for more than 15 hours per day. It's important to note that in Tajik families, children are prized and the center of family life. Tajik caregivers responded immediately to vocalizations from their cradled infants by feeding them, rocking them, or singing to them. Mothers, grandmothers, aunts, neighbors, and older siblings were readily available, interchangeable, and responsive, and Tajik children of all ages, including siblings and village children, surrounded the Gavora and interacted with the infants. One value of a cultural approach is the discovery of new phenomena that challenge widespread assumptions about caregiving practices and the quote-unquote natural course of child development. Cultural beliefs, customs, and practices, geography, climate, and village resources compel caregivers to find ways to keep their children healthy and safe. Gavora cradling is a widespread cultural practice throughout Tajikistan and presumably other parts of Central Asia. Yet, the practice flies in the face of Western norms, theories, and even WHO standards. As caregivers of infants and toddlers, it is essential to be aware of and respect cultural differences in caregiving practices.